What is up everybody? Hazeblade here and today I'm going to be giving you guys a quick rundown on how you can set up RE3 to run optimally on a low budget computer. So the specs that we have here, I'm actually going to go into my system so you can see what I'm running with. This is not a very expensive build at all and I will leave links to literally every component that I have on my computer in the description to the video. But this is not a tricked out PC by any means. Pretty much all of these parts are parts that I got on sale at Micro Center. But of course you can also get them on Amazon, Best Buy, or anywhere that you can order parts, Newegg, wherever. Um, and there's also pre-built PC options too. So um, this is running a Ryzen 7 2700X. I think I got it on sale for under 150 bucks. It's a decent processor. You can even get a Ryzen 5 that'll get the job done for right around 100 bucks with the second gen. 16 gigs of RAM, 3200 megahertz, nothing crazy there. And I am using, as far as display adapter, I am using a 1660 Super, as you can see right here. Not a very expensive graphics card. We're talking a couple hundred bucks for that graphics card, 100-ish dollars for the RAM, 100-ish dollars for the processor, 100-ish dollars for the motherboard. Basically, this PC is about 600 bucks to build. Um, and you can give or take that on a couple different parts. Like I opted in for an M.2 because I found one on sale for a really small M.2 drive, but you could for even less get a solid state hybrid drive or a solid state, you know, kind of give or take. So basically what I have here is a bare bones potato PC setup that if you were to build a brand new PC and not want to break the bank, I promise you, you can still stream to Twitch with high bitrate high resolution and still play re2 at 120 fps or sorry re3 remake excuse me at 120 fps so now that we've gone over system specs i'm going to close these down and i'm going to show you obs a little bit so my obs i've been streaming on twitch for about two years and my obs setup is relatively basic i don't use really stinger transitions or anything like that but if you watch other YouTube channels that talk about like how much resource usage that stuff actually uses, provided that you set up your channel right, I can promise you that it's not gonna use that much system resources even if I use Stinger Transition, stuff like that. I recommend that you check out Alpha Gaming, his channel, uh, his name is Harris Heller, uh, but he has a YouTube channel called Alpha Gaming and it goes all over different stream setup stuff. And he's tested these specific processors and has proven that even with Stinger Transitions and stuff like that, it's not going to bear that much of a load on your computer even while you're streaming and playing at the same time ryzen processors specifically do a really great job with streaming and gaming at the same time however um again this is like bare bones setup so just kind of take that for what it is so my setup is very very basic uh, some of these are turned off just since we're recording for a youtube video i'm keeping things relatively basic but i have spotify running in the background as you can see on the right hand side i have my chat which i can turn on I have Streamlabs, which I'll be turning on so that way we can test some alerts while I'm in game. And we also have my game frame, my webcam, and the display capture. Now, once we boot into RE3, I'm gonna switch this scene over to my RE3 setup, which is not very complicated. I'll switch it over so you can see it. Really, the only difference here is that RE3 is there instead of, uh, instead of the display capture. So obviously the screen went black for you guys, but basically this is exactly the same, but instead of a display capture here, it's just RE3. So. In order to cap your frame rate, a lot of people that I've seen on the forums are upset because they feel that they have to use third-party software. I'm here to tell you that as of this year, NVIDIA has rolled out first-party driver support to allow you to cap your frame rate, and it is super, super easy. All you have to do is open the NVIDIA control panel, which as soon as you plug an NVIDIA graphics card into your machine, this is already provisioned with your drivers. Just make sure, obviously, you have an internet connection and you're updated to the latest version. You're gonna go to Manage 3D Settings, and it's gonna pull up this window. Now, if you want to just cap the frame rate for RE3, you'll have to obviously launch RE3, go into program settings, and then select Resident Evil 3 from the drop down window. But if you want to make it easy, just go into global settings. If you go to max frame rate, you're just going to select max frame rate. You're going to click the drop down window. You'll tech to the slider, set it to 120 FPS, click OK. There will be an apply button down here. You'll click apply. And that is it. Nothing else, no third-party software, nothing. This is all built into your computer already. If you're running on any sort of AMD graphics card, it's under a different setting. I don't have an AMD graphics card, so I don't have a video to make for you as of right now, but there is a setting in there under, your, under the Catalyst Control Center that also has a frame rate limiter in, and it works the exact same way. So once that's set up, you close that, you're good to go. 
and you're ready to launch RE3 and it'll automatically, once you have VSync off and your frame rate set to variable, it's going to work perfectly and you'll be capped to 120 without any need for Reva Turner, no need for profile inspector, nothing like that, it's all stock. So with that being said, we're gonna fire up RE3 and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now again, this is a potato PC and I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're upset because you have to run this game at low graphics and you're trying to speed run, get your priorities straight. Because if you're trying to speed run and you're upset that the game doesn't look amazing, we're speed running a game. Visuals are not like the most important thing when it comes to speed running a game. So that's all I'm gonna say. But as you can see in the top left-hand corner, we're already capped to 120 FPS without any need for internal or external software. So already capped to 120. I will take you guys through my in-game settings real quick, but I'm also gonna include those in the description as well. Nothing particularly crazy here. We're using DX11 since it's more stable than DX12. We're running the game in full screen. 1920 by 1080p resolution. Rendering mode normal, 100% image quality. Pretty standard stuff. Another thing that I should add. I've also seen posts in the forums about people claiming that 144 hertz and 120 hertz downscaling and only having a 60 hertz monitor is a problem. I promise you it's not a problem. This is a 60 hertz monitor that I have had for like six years. And even though my refresh rate is only set to 60 hertz and my frame rate's variable, I can still run the game at 120 FPS and get the exact same performance regardless of what kind of monitor I have. So just keep that in mind. So VSync is off. Very important to turn that off. Otherwise you might have some display issues. And aliasing TAA. Low, 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 minimum. Shadow caching is actually the only thing that I turn on because it, it just flips the processing load basically over from your processor to your GPU. Makes things a little bit nicer, a little bit smoother overall. But pretty much everything else is either off or low. <laughs> Again, we're not going for max graphics on a potato build. So you shouldn't really be having that expectation to begin with. But as you can see, with a computer that is about $600, and a very basic setup, 120 FPS is achievable. Now we're obviously in the menu, so you're gonna wanna get in the game, obviously, to really put that to the test. But trust me when I say, you're still gonna get 120 FPS at low graphics. You don't need to be sitting there with any sort of like crazy, I did not set up key bindings by the way, so pardon my speed running, uh, non-optimal key binds here. But as you can see, I'm still getting 120 FPS on a PC that is really not that expensive. Surprisingly enough, this game is actually way more optimized than RE2 Remake when it comes to the like performance side of things on PC. So it's really not difficult to be able to push this game to 120. And honestly, this game doesn't look that bad even on low graphics. Like from a streaming standpoint, if you're streaming on Twitch, this is really, really easy and really like enjoyable to watch, honestly. Like 120 FPS, obviously Twitch is only gonna output 60 FPS, but the fact of the matter is that the game itself visually doesn't look too bad. It actually looks way better than RE2 Remake does at minimum graphics. But as you can see, 120 FPS, and I might be dropping a frame rate or two here and there, but this is stable 120 FPS. And there are no performance issues. Everything looks fine. And just from an overall frame rate standpoint, you don't need an expensive PC or overpowered graphics cards or processors or anything like that to run this game smoothly at 120 frames per second. Even once we get out into the city. So, I mean, obviously, Obviously, we're going to play through the intro a little bit just so that way we can... That way we can put this to a, a full test. And I know a lot of other people are saying that, you know, if you're on a dual PC setup and whatnot, um, that this might still be advantageous. But th I'm actually streaming right now from the same PC that is running this game. I'm actually streaming at 6,000 bitrate on, on Twitch right now at 1440 or at 1080p, excuse me, and playing this game at 120 FPS on a potato PC.
And as you can see, there's a, the occasional drop to 118, 119, but you're not seeing significant drops below 118 or 119. Now I'm going to push a Streamlabs alert here just to see if it affects anything. They're coming. They must have Let's... sniffed us out. They know we're here. So there's an alert that just went hey, through. Calm down. And as you can see, zero impact to performance in game. Now obviously you're going to be running live split, potentially SRT, things like that in the background too. But those are lightweight enough that you should not have any issues running this game at 120 FPS. So I'm going to finish the intro here and that's going to pretty much do it for this video. But as you can see, I've been I've been able to make it through this entire intro, which is actually the most cutscene heavy part of the game where we're experiencing frame rate issues. The most cutscene heavy part of the game. And I have not seen one single frame drop at all while recording or sorry, while streaming and playing the game at the same time. Consistent 120 frames per second. The game still looks decent and presentable for Twitch or YouTube or Mixer or whatever platform you're streaming to. So again, I'm going to link everything in the description as far as the exact PC setup that I have. So that way you can look up benchmarks and compare them to your own PC. But this is not an expensive PC. And this would get the job done that if you have similar system specs or anything like that, that you should be able to achieve this very, very easily. That 117 FPS dip right there is the lowest that I've seen it go at all after that first loading screen. So that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. Uh, it's very, very simple to get this game running at 120 FPS with a very bare bones PC. 16 gigs of RAM. You could probably still do it with eight, to be honest. I didn't even look at the task manager to see what my resource usage was, but you could probably do this with eight gigs of RAM as well. Um, and a 1660 Super, which is just a little over 200 bucks. Um, and the Ryzen 7 second gens are pretty affordable. You can also do a Ryzen 5, which again, benchmarks between the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7. The performance increase isn't as substantial as a lot of people think it is. So you could literally save another hundred bucks by doing eight gigs of RAM instead and a Ryzen 5, and you could still get the job done on a $500 build. So I hope this helps for people that have concerns about this game at 120 frames per second, but this is not an elaborate PC setup here, guys. This is very, very easily achievable. And this goes to show that 120 FPS is the standard on PC. And although if you choose to run the game on 60 FPS, ideally we're gonna try to make it so that way it's as close as possible. But as of right now, we're not looking to do a split on the boards. We're looking to do a variable filter that if you wanna run on 60, you can run on 60. Just know that it's not that hard to get your PC running at 120 frames per second. So I hope this helps. If you guys have, guys have any questions, feel free to ping me on Discord, send me a message on SRC, and I'm more than happy to help you guys out. But with that being said, you guys have a great one, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.